This is Rivera's third fight here in the United States. The first 14 fights were staged in his home country of the Dominican Republic. During that time, he went 14-0 with nine knockouts. His record now stands at 17-0 with 11 knockouts. Meantime, for Fidel Maldonado, who's been a pro for over 10 years, he said he learned to be patient and to box, use his skills instead of engaging in a toe-to-toe -to -toe battle. Yeah, Maldonado, dad said he's uh, been in the gym, he's learning a lot more, not to just sit there and slug, but box a little bit, not get hit as much. And he's doing that, he's been circling the ring, he's utilizing his jab. Earlier on, he, he actually threw a body shot and then held, you know, so I believe that he's trying to use everything and listen to his trainers and just trying to be a little crafty and um, give as much challenge to this young fighter as he possibly can. Physically, Rivera looks to be the bigger of the two, and there was even a consensus amongst the Maldonado Jr. camp that he could go down to 130. Yeah, but they said he's comfortable at this weight right here. They said he never, he always fought people a couple weight classes above his weight class, so he said he's real comfortable here, and he's going to show that in this fight. Well, he's been in the ring against the likes of, you know, lost to Amir Amam. Also came up short against Fernando Carcamo where he had his jaw broken in his hometown of Albuquerque. And you know that Albuquerque, New Mexico is a hotbed for talent in the fight business. And incidentally, Maldonado Jr. sparred at the age of 14 with Denny Romero. When you think of the top boxers from Albuquerque, you think of the late great Johnny Tappy and also Denny Romero as well. You definitely do, and that was a good left hand by Maldonado that kind of stunned uh, momentarily. Thank you. Well, certainly Maldonado has gotten the respect of Rivera as we head towards the third round. On the corner of Rivera, they told us in fighter meetings yesterday, the focus against Maldonado is to use the distance and also attack the body of Maldonado. And those are wise words, especially when you know that Maldonado can take a bit of punishment. You don't come from Albuquerque and not be tough. I've never seen a fighter from Albuquerque or New Mexico for that matter, and they haven't been tough. That's true, that's true. Maldonado, you know, I mean, he's making his uh, presence felt. He's been moving around. And he, he's been doing it for 10 years. Uh, that, that, should, that says a lot right there. That says he's a veteran. You know, he's doing something for 10 years. Oh, guys, what I like about the fact that they're competing near 135 is that there is quite a bit of talent, young talent, at 135. I mean, Gervonta Davis's name that comes to mind is he just went up to 135. So, you know, there is so much talent that we see in the lightweight division. You know, you also have the likes of Vasily Lomacheco as well, Teofimo Lopez. So, um, lightweight division certainly alive and well and has quite a bit of talent and good young talent as well. You better try to put his name into that mix. Definitely. He's trying, he's trying to get a world title, as he said, like three or four fights he won a world title shot, but he has to get past Maldonado first. And I think he uh, really needs those uh, three or four fights, you know, 17 to 0. You know, he's still got a little bit more uh, growth and maturity uh, before he's truly ready for that shot. When he's only 21, so it's like, you know, okay, you want to move him quickly, but let's pump the brakes a little bit and have him deal with guys oh. like the Maldonado. Yes, tonight is a terrific platform. I mean, he's here, co-main event, you know, he's got a, this crowd, and he's got an experienced fighter in there. You know, we're looking forward to a possible 10 rounds of great boxing. Beautiful body shot right there. Good right hand by Michel Rivera as he comes forward under a minute left here in the third. Maldonado, though, no slouch whatsoever. He's in the midst of a three-fight win streak trying to take it to four. You know, some people might be saying that Maldonado's uh, not technically winning, but, you know, there's moments where he is outworking Riviera. So, you know, from, from that perspective, you know, it's down to the judges and how they feel. 
Anthony, do you agree with that sentiment? I do. I do agree with it. Uh, it it's the way the judges are sitting, you know, the perspective of the punches, the landing punches. If his head is snapping back, if the body shots are clean. And uh, it, it's it's real close on my bit. Well, a straight left that connected by Maldonado, but Rivera is focusing on the body of Maldonado. Here in the end of round three here in Biloxi. The Fox Sports app, guys, Wild and Fury number two. It here soon enough. I agree, man. That is the fight that I'm going to wait for. But the electricity in Vegas will be at a fever pitch. But right now, round four, focusing on the lightweights. Michelle Rivera, the undefeated prospect who's trying to graduate to being a contender, going head to head against Fidel Maldonado, who has won three straight from Albuquerque, New Mexico. There's a right end of the body by Rivera. And you see Maldonado, who is trying to get back in the mix again. He ate a right hand. That's the punch he's been looking for all day. He's not even really throwing that jab. He's kind of just putting that left hand out there, lining up that uh, straight right hand. And it was, it, it was, it was slightly wow. looped. Uh, just an awkward punch that he's throwing right now. But that jab is very ineffective. It, it, it's just there to look the right hand to the body, look for the right hand up top. I agree with you. Just There's to set right him up to, by Rivera. Just to set him up to go through something. Rivera with a lead right hand. He's starting to find a home for that lead right hand. Yeah, and he's, and he's putting out that paw jab consistently. And even though it's not a real jab, what he's really doing there is he's mixing the slow with the fast. And, you know, it's a, it's a tempo thing, and that's how he's able to sneak that right hand right down the pipe. And he's comfortable in there right now. He's a little tense the first couple around now. He's comfortable in there, and he's doing what he needs to do. He's sticking to the game plan of, you know, what they had going on. A little tricky movement there by Maldonado. He just pivoted one direction, went, went the other. Well, Maldonado is sticking to his game plan of boxing, and Rivera is trying to get him to engage more, but Maldonado is so focused on staying on the outside and just boxing, but he eats two right hands in the process. Yeah, well, he's doing his best. He wants to move around. He wants to box. You know, he's working off that jab. He's constantly cir circling off to his right-hand side, which is the best for a southpaw, uh, making, trying to make him reach. Right now, he's moving back to the left. You know, technically, um, that's not what you want to do as a southpaw because he's moving back into that right hand. But so far, he's not getting caught with anything too devastating. No punching. I think he got caught with a couple of right hands, but they're right on the end of them. Final moments of the fourth between Michel Rivera and Fidel Maldonado Jr. We'll see that in the later development of a fighter, but you're seeing it now with Rivera, who's only 21 years of age. Well, you know, that just proves um, that... This is this is his sport. This is boxing. You know, he had a tremendous um, amateur background. He's been around with uh, tons of great fighters. You know, uh, he's got uh, great fighters to look up to, mentors, and he's a very confident young man. When we were talking to him yesterday at the uh, fighter meeting, like you said, he he's learned English, so he was speaking to us in English, and he's just really looking forward to putting on a great performance and growing his fan base and becoming more popular in this sport of boxing. Anthony, what would you like to see more from Fidel Maldonado? He's having success, but not much. Uh, just counter punch him more. Uh, doing like Keith said, you know, step to the side and fake him out a little bit and, and shoot the left hand because a left hand fighter fighting a right hand fighter, you can get that left hand down. There's a right hand by Rivera backing up Maldonado who shakes his head as to say he's okay. But Rivera is starting to pick up the pace here in round five. 100 seconds left, left in the fifth. Yep, I think he knows Maldonado can't hurt him, so he's uh, just pushing the full pace and I guess trying to get him tired and, and go for the stoppage. Pick him up. Pick him up. Slightly a low blow there, warning by the referee. 
Well, for Maldonado, he had gone almost three years without a knockout victory. When we asked him about what that meant for him, he goes, it was good to be able to have that feeling again. But he just got tattooed with a big right hand. And Maldonado shaking his head, but he is retreating backwards. Yeah, there was a couple big right hands. I think it was three there. And they, were, they were a left hand by Maldonado. So you can't fall asleep on this guy. He still has, like I say, 20 knockouts. You can't fall asleep on him. Guys, the only thing that I like are in threes are tacos. I like three tacos or more with every meal. But, again, that's another topic for another day. Yeah, definitely a little bit more action this round. Stop. Come back. Box. Fidel Maldonado Jr., Michelle Rivera. Maldonado trying to upset Rivera. We already have one upset tonight with Clay Collard finishing off Ray Wajardo in the second. Maldonado still very much in this lightweight co-main event here from Biloxi, Mississippi. What a start to 2020. A uh, big left hook as we head towards the end of the fifth. That's the end of round five. Michel Rivera showing off his power punches as Maldonado ate it and shook his head. What did we decide on the flyers again? Uh, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. I think we're going to swap over to over 75 years of savings and service. But we're just going to swap over? Yep. Pump the brakes on this, swap it over to that. Pump the brakes and uh, swap over? That's right. What, instead of all these stuff already up? Well, what are we going to do with these? Keep it in your desk, um, save it for next time. GEICO. Over 75 years of savings and service. Back here in Biloxi, Mississippi, the Beau Rivage Resort and Casino. We are through the first half of the flight in our co-main event. Here's Marcos Villegas. Ray, I have it uh, 50 to 45 for Michelle Rivera. I had a swing round in round number two. I felt it could have gone uh, either way. I think overall, when you look at the fight, who's landing the more damaging punches? Who is landing the cleaner punches and the, and the punches that are getting the attention of the judges? I think at this point, it's Michelle Rivera, and that's why he's up in this fight for me. Thank you very much, Marcos. We talked about those punches landing. De Vera landed a fight high, 16 punches in the fifth. On the contrary, for Maldonado, he's yet to land more than seven punches in any round, much thanks to our statistician, Justin, for giving us those gems all night long. Justin Goodman, and right behind to my side, and does an excellent job, as does the entire crew, here on this Super Bowl weekend, the Super Bowl tomorrow, live on Fox. Yeah, I got to say that Maldonado, you know, he's putting up a good effort, but, you know, he's just moving around the ring, you know, occasionally getting popped with these right hands. But when he, he gets caught, you know, it's kind of like a clear punch that's hitting him. And even though he's throwing little flurries, mixing in and landing a few punches of his own, it's not really standing out. So I can see uh, that verdict from him. Would you want to see more of a sense of urgency? Rivera is the obviously the a-side he's the trying to become a legitimate contender but for Maldonado they have him be more busy because he's on the brink of potentially becoming a journeyman if he's not successful tonight yeah and you, and you have to it's the second half of the fight you have to know that you're down especially in the first half you got to pick up the pace right now if you're Maldonado What's startling to me, Keith, is the fact that Maldonado, in easier said than done, hasn't landed more, in, hasn't landed double digits in the fight in any one round. Well, yeah, that's, uh, those stats are true, you know, because there were rounds where he was throwing plenty of combinations. But that also just shows you that Miguel Riviera, his defense, you know, at 21 years old, He's very alert. He's very calm in there. He's very poised. He keeps leaning forward, leaning back. He puts his hands back up. I mean, he's, like he said in the fighter meter meeting, he said he's a marked fighter, and he's showing that it's to us tonight. Rivera is always in a position to punch for the most part. He never seems to be in a bad spot in the ring. His ring IQ is very impressive. Yeah, he's very aware in there. He's very uh, aware of what what's going on, where the punches are coming from, especially with a, a, a veteran like Maranaro. Uh, he's 
he's right in the pocket, slipping punches, and countering back with his own punches. The way I would categorize Michel Rivetum, who's undefeated, is he is a solid, fundamentally sound fighter. Does he do anything great? The jury's still on him, that, but he does a lot of things very well. Almost like a lightweight Tito Trinidad. Well, certainly, I agree. Not with, obviously, not the power, but certainly has the time. You know, he, he's being very crafty. He wants to be very accurate. But I would kind of like to see him put a few punches together. Maybe, maybe just a simple three-punch combination. Well, 91% of the fight has been fought from distance. He better do a very good job with the jab, and he just tattooed Maldonado with the right hand. Yeah, well-placed counter right hand right there. And that's what he's waiting on. He's waiting to set up a counter punch. He's throwing a, a jab that doesn't mean anything. He's waiting to counter punch him. In. He just did that with that right hand. Is that why Maldonado is reluctant to throw? Because anytime he throws, he absorbs or eats a counter right hand. And it could be. He, he, he knows the the. Uh, he's so fast that he got to be tenant to come in or even throw anything to get there. I think that's what modern Nairo needs to stay is in the inside instead of the outside. We're at the halfway mark of the seventh. Michel Rivera, who's undefeated 17 and 0. There's a left hook on the top of the head of Maldonado. He follows it up with the right to the body. And now the pressure is intensifying slowly but surely from Michel Rivera towards Maldonado. A little talking in the ring, too. The fighter's going at it. Maldonado said it, it wasn't hurting. It would be significant for Rivera to finish off Maldonado, especially at this stage of his career. Maldonado has been stopped twice in his career. Three right hands. But like I mentioned, there's no left hook. There's no follow-up. You know, the young fighter, I believe that, you know, especially if he wants to get this guy out of there, I don't think it's going to be one simple punch. I think it is, it's going to have to take uh, possibly two. Boom, punches boom. and bunches. It seems like he's pot shotting and not really putting combinations together, but when he does, he has success. So is that what he needs to do to finish this fight? 1,000% he has to put the combos together. Unfortunately, the kid is, is uncomfortable. He's a little bit all over the place, southpaw, so it's, uh, it's a little uncomfortable. But, yeah, when he does uh, put combinations together, he has a lot of success. He has no answer for him, and he needs to do that. But, you know, he's crafty, so Fidel's crafty, and uh, he's proving it that, you know, you can, um, you know, make it good. Thanks, Coach Ray. Thank you very much, Jordan. Now, when it comes to pot shotting, what does that mean for our viewers? Just hitting one shot. One shot and go. One shot here and one shot there. It's not putting combinations together. What he needs to do, what he's been saying the whole night. It's like a metronome versus a drum line. Tip, pop, pop, pop. Instead of do da do da do da do you know, but his trainer, knowing his fighter, he says it's the southpaw stance and it's the movement that's making his fighter feel slightly uncomfortable in there. So, once again, this is a great matchup for the young fighter, uh, for him to get this kind of experience to further his development later on in his career. Well, and it is a whole thing, and Keith, you pointed out, a trainer who knows his fighter, and it's clear that Herman Caicedo and Michel Rivera have a very good partnership together. And there, there's that a was an right overhand, hand. overhand right that momentarily stunned him. I think he's still hurt. I think it was an inch away from a knockdown with that kind of rear hook. Well, boxing is a game of inches, even centimeters at times. Maldonado is one rough, tough customer, but tonight he's matched up against Michel Rivera. 
And I just think Maldonado need to get in the inside. That's where he's going to have be effective as in the inside, not on the outside. Riviera is looking for counter punches, so he needs to stay on the outside before that. Now, the old Fidel Maldonado, he's been a pro for 10 years. He gets backed up with the right hand. What try to crowd Rivera? What try to make it a tough and physical and grueling fight? The new Maldonado is focused on boxing, and I think that game plan is working against him. I think so, too. I think he needs to go back to, his, to the way he used to fight, and maybe he'll have some success. Closely. He's in deep trouble now. Two big right hands. He better pouring on the pressure against Fidel Maldonado. And he still was pot shot it. You got it. You know, put the punches there. You can hurt this guy. He said, but after that statement, he's do not give him any gifts. So he's still encouraging his fighter to be smart on that. Well, it is calculating aggression, not getting erratic, staying composed, but going to work. And I was very impressed with his composure at uh, 21 years of age. For Fidel Maldonado, they need to have more of a sense of urgency because you don't get many opportunities like this, especially after suffering, you know, more than three or four losses. Yeah, and you, and you got to put the punches together. He's still pot shotting a little bit. If he put the punches together, he'll get him down there. There's a right by Rivera. You know, the movement of Maldonado is showing some difficulty for Riviera. But, you know, he's not moving his hands. And with that, he's not going to be able to impress the judges. They're coming up on the halfway point of the ninth round. Michel Rivera is controlling this fight. And literally, Rivera is controlling the pace, the distance, and doing what he wants to do inside that ring. He surely is. I mean, he's been composed from the first bell. You know, and even though he's fighting the veteran, you know, he's leaning on him. He's giving him a, little, a few tricks in there. For Maldonado, I'm surprised you don't see more of a sense of urgency from Maldonado Jr., who you know is very tough and gritty and will make you work. But could it be the case that the event is just too much for him? Yeah, he's, and then he hurt him right there with the left hook. Big right uppercut by the event that found its mark. There goes a little bit of that urgency you were talking about. Well, he tried to push it a little bit, and then he got lit up with the right uppercut. And he's got a good body work as Maldonado continues to get backed up. I think it would just be tough to get him out of there with one punch. I think, like keep saying, you need to throw punches, uh, combinations, twos and threes, to get this guy out of there because he's waiting on that one punch, knowing nothing is coming back. Final stages of the ninth round. It has been all Michel Rivera controlling this co-main event here in Biloxi. That's the end. Maldonado Jr. and gets the finish. We take a look at it. Boom. Clipped him right on the right chin. Cross. Clipped him right on the chin, right where he needed to be. And that one punch put him down. But it was that punches and bunches before he threw that. That put him down. Right on the chin, Maldonado went to the canvas. There you saw that. Damn, what man, that's that, you know. Painful, but all her pieces are really good. Oh, my. Oh, thank you, Louie. Perfectly smooth finish. Plus, our safety guys are each size to help you from everything. Rely on the 